Hi everybody, Justin here from chemistrynotes.com and this section is our last section for the second semester of general chemistry. Now, I do want to mention that some general chemistry courses like the full course or the second semester of general chem, sometimes they won't end the course or the semester with a brief intro to OCHEM, um, a brief intro to organic chemistry. But just in case your particular class or course does, I wanted to make sure we cover it. So this is the last section of general chemistry, section 20. So this is section 20, video number one. And it's, uh, let's just get started. Section 20, introduction to organic chemistry. The first bullet point says the following. The carbon atom is the cornerstone of organic chemistry and it's an essential element in the biological world. Carbon has the unusual ability to bond strongly to itself in rings or chains, creating a backbone from which many millions of organic molecules can be formed. So carbon can form chains, like a carbon, single bonded to a carbon, single bonded to a carbon, and just link like chains, or they can also form rings, okay? Sometimes it's a single bond, sometimes it's a double bond, sometimes it's even a triple bond. Now, it then goes on to say, carbon also bonds strongly to other nonmetals, such as oxygen, hydrogen, nitrogen, sulfur and the halogens and the halogens of course are cl br i and f fluorine chlorine bromine and iodine all right so the third bullet point then is kind of my definition of organic chemistry for you it's it says organic chemistry is the study of carbon containing compounds and their properties Organic chemistry, the study of carbon containing compounds and their properties. These compounds, as I mentioned before, these compounds typically contain chains, right? Links or rings of carbon atoms. All right, let's move to the top of page two of today's notes. And I'm going to make a few more notes here. We are eventually going to get into the nomenclature of something called alkanes. Um, alkanes are the kind of the simplest organic molecules. But first, I just want to give you some information on alkanes, a backdrop uh, on alkanes. And then in, in the next video, we'll, we will learn how to name alkanes. So at the top, it says the simplest of the organic molecules are the alkanes. And alkanes are saturated hydrocarbons. So you can kind of sound out what hydrocarbons means. It's going to be compounds that are comprised primarily of carbon and who? Hydrogen, right? That's how you get hydrocarbon. So compounds that are mainly constructed of carbon and hydrogen atoms. Saturated, a saturated hydrocarbon is a hydrocarbon that is going to have all of its carbon-carbon bonds are going to be single bonds. And if you have only single bond carbon atoms, then each carbon is able to bond to four other atoms. In other words, it's saturated in all of the atoms it can possibly be bonded to. So compounds in which all of the CC bonds are single bonds, so each carbon is bonded to four other atoms. So example, CH4 methane, C2H6 ethane. And you'll notice that each of the carbons is bonded to four other substituents. Now ethane, you can write as a simple dash in the end point or the junction at the end there is a CH3. So these are examples of unbranched alkanes. We'll do some more. So the next one that would follow would be to have three carbons. C3H8, if I line up my three carbons like that and then put H's all around it to satisfy the octet for carbon, this is propane. 
and there is a kind of abbreviated structure, kind of looks like a chevron, like an up arrow. C4H10, there is the skeletal structure. You notice that you've got the four carbons linked together. This is called butane or N-butane. N kind of means normal butane, which means there's no branching. And then I've got the abbreviated structure in parentheses on the far right. Every junction, every junction, like right here, is a CH2 group. And on the ends, on the ends of these very abbreviated structures, those are CH3s. Now, C4H10, butane, right? Once we get to four carbons in length, we have enough carbons now where we can begin to, to branch out one of the carbons. So look, down here is another C4H10, except I'm drawing it completely differently, okay? This is an, an isomer, a constitutional isomer of the, CH, of the C4H10 that you see above. The straight chain is N-butane. This guy is called 2-methylpropane. And the abbreviated structure, it's called a Kekuli structure, by the way. Kind of looks like a Mercedes-Benz logo, I guess you could say. And this, this particular C4H10, we'll learn how to name it 2-methylpropane in the next video. Don't worry about that now. But this is a structural isomer of N-butane. It's got the same number of atoms, but we have different connections, different bonds. Okay, 2-methylpropane, by the way, has a uh, pet name or a common name. It's called isobutane. I put the box around the systematic name. This is, this is how we will name stuff in video number two. All right, top of page three of today's notes. We're moving right along. Now we've moved uh, up a carbon. Now we're at C5H12. So now I've got five carbons to work with. You might expect I have more opportunities to make branches, and that's the case. With C4H10, I only had one particular branch I could make. And that was putting the carbon off of the middle carbon. Here, first I'm drawing regular pentane or N-pentane. It's just five carbons in a row. Saturate with all the H's and you end up with pentane, okay, straight chain. Now, because I've got more carbons, I'm allowing myself more opportunities to make structural isomers. In this case, there are two other structural isomers. And I've drawn the backbones first and now I'm going to fill in every spot I can with hydrogens and I end up with C5H12. So right now on the page of notes, you're seeing me in the process of making three different isomers of C5H12. Specifically, they're structural isomers. You can also call them constitutional isomers. The one in the middle is 2-methylbutane. Common name is isopentane. And I've got the Kikuli structure or the kind of the stick figure on the far right. The next one is 2,2-dimethylpropane, has a common name of neopentane. And again, we're going to learn how to name those. You see the boxes with the names, 2-methylbutane, 2,2-dimethylpropane. We're going to learn how to name alkanes in video number two, which is after this. C6H14 would be hexane. C7H16 would be heptane. That should not be heptene. It's heptane. C8H18 is octane. C9H20 is nonane. C10H22 is decane. Just remember, C7H16 right there should be called heptane. Okay, H-E-P-T-A-N-E. -E. All right, now those are all straight chain alkanes. All right, I could call them N-hexane, N-heptane, N-octane, but they all have the uh, general formula CnH2n plus 2, okay? In fact, every alkane has that. It doesn't have to be a straight chain. All right, now I did mention uh, that we were going to learn how to name alkanes in video number two, so that's very important. You should, if, you, if you're taking general chemistry in the last chapter or the last section of your second semester general chem or the full course general chem is organic chemistry. You want to go ahead and watch video number one like we just did and then move on to video number two where nomenclature is important. There's four rules on how to name alkanes and we'll take care of that right now if you click over to the next video. All right, I'll see you over there.